people, my people, <clears throat> I promised not to torture you with a um, my impersonation of a uh, Tennessee accent because it's that painful. You got to go and watch it to make sure that you absolutely know that you do accents a damn sight better than I do. So tonight it's um, Jack Daniels. It's an American bourbon. It's the second bourbon I ever tried back in the day when this was a brunette. Um, the first bourbon I ever tried by memory was Jim Beam, and that's certainly on the list. So Jack Daniels is a Tennessee sour mash whiskey. This went for about 50 bucks in my local. Um, there's going to be no, no connection to where you buy it because you walk into a bottle shop in Australia, and I think most of the world, and um, basically you'll bump into a bottle of Jack Daniels. So, which begs the question, why am I doing this interview? Well, there are 18 year olds out there who've never tried this stuff and they need to be told. Um, the nose... Okay, they put a whole lot of shit on this, on the label. Uh, which tells me absolutely nothing about what I should be expecting. In the nose. Um, I know they're charred barrels. It's a bourbon, so it's made of corn, corn-based whiskey. Corn-based whiskeys in the United States kick off after the War of Independence because the British cracked the sulks and denied them the wheat and the scotch that they were drinking. Scotch and the Irish that the English were drinking. So, yeah, I'm getting a lot of caramel, a lot of licorice. Um, <clears throat> this sells by the gigalitre and it sells by the gigalitre because despite all the bullshit you want to get putting up, reading a label which most of which is just marketing um, this is a really good good bourbon um, you know if we let's say I had the um, excise laws that the Americans do and they literally pay 10% of what we do um, we'd be flogging you know, our whiskeys into the United States, and the fact is, we don't. Um, this is Jimmy often drunk with Coke, and the only reason why you're not seeing my face drink it with Coke is because, well, there are nicer things to drink this, drink this with than Coca Cola, although that would make it an all American drink. Um, there's not really a lot to say. It's a standard bourbon, it's got licorice, it's got caramel flavours to it. It's aged in um, charred oak barrels for, I think, two years. Um, it's 40%. And it makes the absolute stunning base of at least two cocktails I've just driven on the other half. Um, and we'll be um, inked into this because there's a um, Lynchburg uh, lemonade and a um, jackknife that... Um, well, they created the event horizons in my house because the moment I touched them, gave them to wife, they just disappeared over the event horizon and were instantly hers. So if you're looking for a introduction in Australia um, to bourbons and you're 18 years old and you want to go and drink, um, look, I prefer this over Jim Beam. This is several steps up from Jim Beam. Um, Jim Beam follows the rule, I think, the more... The cheaper you are, you have to make up your flavours by adding stuff to it, okay, that aren't alcohol. So if Jim Beam is retailing for $50 a bottle, and this is retailing for 60 or 70 the reason why this retails for 70 is because there's more booze and more care taken in the making of it, and it really just does come down to being that simple. This is better quality booze. Don't do yourself a disfavour and drink um, the cheap shit because it's not really worth the hangovers, people. I'm got this because I've been young and dumb. Okay, so this is Uncle Jack's number seven cure for um, sadness, which is what I used to call it when this was a brunette. I drank a lot of it for quite a long time, um, and the reason why I drank a lot of it for a very long time is because yeah, it's good. I might actually do it with Coke, do it with a cocktail. This works really well. It's a very simple, unoffending bourbon. So I'm certain if I was to get myself into Tennessee, I would come across bourbons that made this look like garbage. Um, mass produced garbage because um, I certainly see plenty of rooms in the tequila world that what I'm looking at here is just swill. Um, the stuff that's marketed here is because it's fogged off the stuff, but guys, you can know that better. So I'm certain if I was to get to Tennessee or Kentucky 
a Louisiana IP coming across with and say, hey, this is not right, you know, vomit. Having said that, it's not vomit in Australia. It's a perfectly workable um, bourbon. And if you're going to go out and drink bourbons, you know, you may as well drink this one, which I'm doing tonight. Don't make me speak to you. I like this. You're all be good people and go and get yourself some Jack Daniels. Number seven cure. Oh, number seven. Subscribe, like, share, people.